Hey everyone, my name is Sophia, a master's student from Dance Studies. Today I'm here to talk about my research, the absentia, a choreographic exploration of absence through presence. And I have two musicians and seven dancers for this piece, and I've listed their name on the screen, but unfortunately I only got three dancers today. <laughs> Before Getting into my research question, I want to talk about the background of the research. I am conducting this research under the Master of Dance Studies, the University of Auckland, for examination purpose. And this research will outcome in both academic <coughs> writings and choreographic performance. <coughs> the aims of my research are to find out meanings absence has to presence and to develop a choreography of absence. My research also aims to find out the relationships absence and presence may have so that I may build new conversations between the two. For achieving my research aims, I thought to use the theories of qualitative practice late and post-positivism as the methodological paradigms. The reason for me to choose qualitative is because it values the ways of knowing. By using a qualitative paradigm, I can have chance to explore understandings and knowledge of humankind. And more importantly, by using a qualitative paradigm, I can promote like more possibilities, variations, and new thoughts for my research. And a post-positivism paradigm emphasizes on making meanings through the way of researching. And it can be linked to practically research as they both look for making meanings along the process of the research. And a practice lead research can be understood as subjective, emergent, and interdisciplinary. It emphasizes and indicates on knowing from the process of doing or making. As a dancer and a choreographer, it seems natural or logical for me to make a dance piece as the way to explore my research query. The methods I use for this research is studio practice, to which I will take my dancers with me to a dance studio, and I will also give them some choreographic tasks decided by me. And the choreographic task is basically like something related to my research questions, and I ask to my dancers, and instead of answering that, they will answer it in a dancely way. For example, if you ask me, like, what's your name? I will not say, oh, my name is Xiao Feng Hu. I will answer it like, sort the movement and to draw it with my body and that's the what choreographic process uh, task is and I will observe my dancers doing the way of research and I will also journal my thoughts along the whole research process. A dance performance is also part of my research method to which this performance will show in a dance theater with audiences and my examiner so that I can show them really a performance of absence. From my key literature, I've been looking at ontology, drawing references on absence and presence. I also looked at choreographic process. Ontology can be divided into two parts to which the ontology of being in present is haunted. Ontology indicates something that happened before slide into presence to which this before or past or absence is not over and waiting for a chance to return or to come back. So why is ontology meaningful for this research? For me, it is an announcement of the return of absence coming into presence. Um, and uh, I also look at the meanings absence and presence have. And by looking at the word, absence means a lose of something, a nothing, or something which no longer exists. Presence, on the other hand, means to be here or being here. They're totally adverse concepts, but they cannot be separated, because without absence, presence is, will lose its meanings, and vice versa. Uh, they, I've been looking at different artistic disciplines, and I've been looking at what artists do by using the concept of absence and presence in their art practices. Uh, visual artists, for example, have been using the concept of absence and presence to create image of destroyed land or buildings or environment. As Wood had stated, the disappearance 
or absence of material can possibly evoke or mark the fictional presence. I also look at the choreographic process so that I can make in my choreography and it can give me clear idea of how to make a choreography of absence and how to structure it into the research. Here comes to my emerging ideas. To explore or to perform absence, we need to figure out what this absence is or what can be this absence. As said by Derrida, we need to find out it by standing before it, standing before absence. So from my understanding, I think, is to find out where absence is by looking back to our past. I have given my dancers a choreographic task. I asked them to write down the significant moment in their history in relation to absence, write down to a piece of paper. And when I get a piece of paper, I ask them to create static positions out of the sentence they wrote. And when I got all the movement materials and I put them into a piece, and I call them the history of absence. Finding it from history, absence can also be taken as a pastime. So to perform this pastime, it is necessary to create a disordered time, a time accused of time, a time when past is no longer past, and when present is no longer present. To perform this time, it's necessary to light the pastime, to come to presence, and to haunt us. So from this controlling and haunting, the pastime can possibly find its way to return to the presence, 
to which I call this phrase the past returns. Now let's talk about the significance of the research. So it benefits me and my dancers and possibly audiences so that I, they can have a new thoughts and experience or understandings on the concept of absence and presence. It also contributes to practice-led research as the new research approaches will be found along with the process of the research. I am still studying the concept absence and presence and I'm sure that there's still a lot of things waiting for me to discover. And thank you all for today and this is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the performance and the um, presentation, that was fantastic. Um, I'd like to know how you chose to use the space to convey your concept of um, absence. Yes, um, actually, it, the first time when I tried to develop a piece of absence and presence is come to my personal experience. Because like, I'm a dancer and I learned it in a really young time. And one time when my teachers stretched me and I was passed out and at the time, I felt like I am absent, but at the same time, I'm still alive and I'm also present. So that came to my interest to make a piece of to perform absence through presence. Yeah, if he's answered your question. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so I'm also interested in absences and presences and, and hauntings in, in my own work, but. Uh, in, a, in a very different way and, and explain in, through a kind of written medium rather than dance. And I was kind of thinking about the, the differences, and I guess almost the pros and cons of the different mediums in the sense that um, with uh, dance, it must be an enormous uh, challenge to make present things that are not physically here, that are absent, to actually put them on stage. I'm curious about how you go about that, but also some of the benefits to dance. So that, you know, when I think about absences in my own life, they're very, they're very much felt. I think of people that are no longer with me or far away. They're things that haunt me in a very kind of emotional, effective way. So I'm curious about what you think about as dance as being able to kind of enliven and, and, and point to that. Well, actually, um, I think, because this is just part of my choreography, so, and originally this piece has seven dancers, so maybe when all of them are here, the sense of absence and presence could be a bit more and could be a bit stronger. And I also have a saying of funeral, yes, and to mark the actually absence. But actually even the one is dead is show absence in our life, but we can still like remember her or him, and we can still remember the time when we were getting together with her or him. So which means, it's like not all the memories are sad, it's sometimes like we have happy, happy memories. So I think the absence is what makes us who we are today. Yes, so it's not about like the down or fall all the time. Yeah, thank you. Um. <coughs> So um, I really much enjoyed how you uh, integrated the or you know your narration there with your dances. I thought that was quite different. I was wondering if you could just tell me the significance of that piece there in conveying your message of absenteeism. Um, so. So when you were doing your narration there okay. and talking, the dancers came over and interacted yes. with you, which is quite different from what I normally see narration being quite separate. From yes, because um, I think absence can make potentially a lot of things. For example, if I'm talking and suddenly like I'm thinking other things, that's kind of absence. And if I'm presenting my presentation and suddenly I've been controlled or manipulated by others, it's also kind of absence because I'm not focused on the presentation anymore. Yes, so I think that just been one of the ways to play with the concept of absence and presence.